It's not tough to figure out who's a terrorist. The Random House Dictionary defines it as, quote, the use of violence and threats to intimidate or coerce, especially for political purposes. I think that's pretty succinct. So the murder spree committed by Anders Bering Breivik on Friday in Norway meets that test. He murdered 76 of his countrymen and published a 1,500-page madman's rant to explain his politics. He was insane, or evil, I think probably more evil than insane. His lawyer says so, and it's pretty obvious, but that doesn't mean it wasn't terrorism. He surely was a terrorist. He wanted to start a European revolution. He wants other murderers to rise up and kill 45,000 innocent people. That's what he wrote. It's crazy. It's evil, but it is terrorism. Now, some terrorists are lone wolves, people like the Unabomber, Ted Kaczynski. He was a recluse living in a shack in Montana. He sent bombs to universities and airlines because he hated technology. Now, time will tell if Breivik in, in Oslo acted alone or if he had others with him. After reading his 1,500-page manifesto, I suspect that he talked to like-minded madmen, but actually did all the work himself, his diary of building bombs by himself seemed quite authentic, and he expresses tremendous paranoia in his book about talking to people who might have turned him into police. Now, if Breivik turns out to have had a group of collaborators, though, they will surely be listed as a banned terrorist group around the world. Here's a look at the U.S. State Department's list of banned foreign terrorist groups. It's alphabetical, Abu Nidal, Abu Sayyaf, Al-Aqsa, Al-Shabaab, Ansal al-Islam, you know, you get the picture. The Irish Republican Army is on there too, and a few other groups like the Shining Path in Peru, but it's pretty much dominated by Islamist groups, many of which have the word Islam in their name. Now the Canadian list is pretty similar. Take a look at it. Abu Nidal, Abu Sayyaf, Al-Jihad, Al-Qaeda. There are a few differences between the Canadian and American lists. I mean, we have an extra Tamil terrorist group on our list that the U.S. doesn't. But let's recap for a moment. We know what a terrorist is someone who uses violence for political purposes. So we can call Breivik a terrorist. And if we're wondering if there's a terrorist group out there, we can check the list by our own government or by the U.S. government. Now, whether or not journalists choose to use the word terrorist is a very political matter. And it won't surprise you to learn that the most pro-terrorist networks in the world, like Britain's BBC and Canada's CBC, have explicit policies warning against using the word terrorist. Seriously, here's what the BBC says. The word terrorist itself can be a barrier rather than an aid to understanding our, our responsibility is to remain objective and report in ways that enable our audiences to make their own assessments about who is doing what to whom. Got that? It's from their online official BBC guidelines. I mean, calling a terrorist a terrorist wouldn't be objective, you see. It would confuse things, you see, and would be a barrier to understanding. This is not satire. This is really the BBC's official guideline. Here's my favorite part of the BBC rules. Accepting that there are some actions which most people would recognize as a terrorist act, the hand grenade thrown into a crash, the airport queue machine gunned, we should still avoid the word. That is the BBC. Now, our pro-Taliban, pro-Omar Carter, anti-Israel CBC here in Canada is just the same. Here's a report from the CBBC Ombudsman with almost identical language. It says CBC journalists should quote, I'm going to quote now, exercise extreme caution before using the words terrorist and terrorism. It's a highly controversial term that can leave journalists taking sides in a conflict, unquote. Nope. When a terrorist commits terrorism, and you don't call it terrorism, that's taking sides in a conflict. That's whitewashing terrorism. That's making excuses for terrorism. That's bending the language to pretend terrorism isn't so bad. That's being a PR agency for terrorism. It's amazing to me that the CBC and the BBC actually put their pro-terrorist rules in writing like that. They, they don't care. Which brings me to the exciting news of the day. Because the CBC has overcome their reluctance to call someone a terrorist. I'm quite excited about this. Now, I'm not talking about mass murderer Anders Breivik of Norway. They don't call him a terrorist. They have a much nastier name for him. They call him a Christian fundamentalist. They practically spit when they say that. Look at this CBC montage we put together. Take a look. This is the prime suspect. He's a 32-year-old fundamentalist Christian with apparently allegedly strong views about Muslims and immigration. He's described as a 32-year-old fundamentalist Christian. He is described as right-wing, a Christian fundamentalist, and having anti-Muslim views. 
Already known as a fundamentalist Christian who chose to be baptized at 15. A suspected Christian fundamentalist is charged in the attacks, but police are now investigating the possibility he didn't act alone. Well, we know that he is 32 years old and we know that he lived with his mother. And apparently, according to some of the websites that he maintained, including a Facebook site, he had some pretty uh, Christian fundamentalist views. Um, apparently, he has been cooperating with police, though, and is very keen to tell his story. Oh, they hate Christian fundamentalists much more than they hate terrorists, don't they? Of course, he wasn't a uh, Christian at all, as I proved yesterday. Bavik hasn't been to church since he was a teenager. He's a pagan. Uh, I, uh, I'm not talking about Bravik. The CBC has found someone else to call a terrorist. Check this out. It's a clip from the CBC on Friday. They named the real terrorist. Roll the clip. You know, there are extremists in every religion, whether it's Islam, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Hinduism, even Buddhists. Uh, the Jewish Defense League is a banned terrorist organiza organization in Canada. So it's Did you hear that? That's the CBC security expert, Bill Gillespie. And he's not just offering up his personal opinion about the Jewish Defense League. He's saying that they are on the list of banned terrorist groups. So it's not just his opinion. It is a matter of fact. Let's look at that list again. Here's the Canadian list. The Jewish Defense League is not on the list. I have checked and double-checked. The Jewish Defense League is not a terrorist group. They're not even like the Guardian Angels, you know, that U.S. group that would ride on the New York subways in the 70s and 80s to protect people when the cops weren't around. They're, they're not even like that. The Jewish Defense League is basically a group of bloggers and political co commenters. Uh, here's a shot of their leader, Mayor Weinstein, uh, commenting on Friday's mass murder. It's our videotape. Roll it for a second. See what goes on in other countries in Europe that there's, there are acts of terrorism. There was an act of terrorism uh, over the weekend. Uh, from the other extreme, uh, we don't want any extreme going on in Canada. We want to make sure that uh, there won't be any foothold for terrorism. That's the Jewish Defense League, a guy in a suit saying he's against terrorism. But Bill Gillespie of the CBC says he is a terrorist. Weinstein seems pretty reasonable to me. He's not a terrorist. He's never been charged with terrorism, let alone convicted, let alone listed as a terrorist group on the Canadian government's list of terrorists or on the U.S. list or anywhere else. It is made up. The CBC made it up. The CBC that is so reluctant to call Muslim terrorists terrorists because that would be taking sides, you see, loves to brand the mass murderer in Norway a Christian fundamentalist and just announced on national TV a peaceful Jewish group as a group of terrorists. The CBC are slanderers. They're taking sides. They're not neutral. They work for the enemy courtesy of James Moore, Canada's conservative heritage minister who can't stop shoveling money at them. Oh, one last thing, you know, the CBC isn't shy about defaming a peaceful Jewish political club as terrorists. But last week when Vic Taves, the minister of public safety, released pictures of 30 war criminals illegally in Canada, people for whom there were warrants out for their arrest, the CBC refused to publish those photos, seriously, foreign war criminals. So let's sum up here. A mass murderer in Oslo? The CBC will declare him a fundamentalist Christian, their worst insult. Muslim terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda? To call them terrorists is to be unfair, says the CBC. A Jewish group? Terrorists, and lying about them being listed as a banned organization. But 30 wanted war criminals? The CBC doesn't want you to know who they are. Well. We're he here at The Sun are on your side. We learned earlier today that suspected war criminal Manuel de la Torre Herrera was picked up in Toronto because media outlets like The Sun decided to show his face in public. The CBC refused to. We're not afraid to take sides. We're on the side against the terrorists, against the war criminals. We call them by their name, terrorists, because that is the truth. Al-Qaeda are terrorists. Breivik is a pagan terrorist. These war criminals should be rounded up. Mayor Weinstein is a political activist. He's a threat to no one. Now, part of me wants to recommend that Weinstein sue the CBC and their know-nothing expert, Gillespie, for defamation, for calling him a terrorist. But really, all that would happen is another million tax dollars would be blown by the CBC. It wouldn't come out of Gillespie's pockets. It would come out of our pockets courtesy of James Moore, their advocate at Stephen Harper's cabinet table. The world can be a terrible place by taking sides against Canada and for the world's terrorists. 
The CBC shows its true colors.